going to talk to you today about um, about the O2 Arena showdown that happened um, this weekend. Um, just to say for you know for my English fans, I'm doing this in English as usual, so everybody can understand and um, and uh, follow what what we're saying. Och talla svenska svenska som uh, följer, så ska jag bara säga att jag kör det på engelska som vanligt så att alla kan hänga med i vad vi pratar om då. All right, let's get to it. Um, this weekend, uh, O2 Arena in uh, in Greenwich, London. Um, what an amazing, amazing card! I mean, that was probably one of the best fighter cards I've seen in a in a long while. Um, every match was well, apart from one. Uh, so every match was really, really good. You had um, uh, well, the, the apart from one. A match was obviously Derek Shishora against um, uh, Jakob Gospic, who was well, you know, uh, hats off to to Shishora. It was a, it was a, um, uh, he came in quick, you know, take the fight. He only fought the week before and won, of course. Um, he looks good. He looks, you know, he looks cracking. He did what he should. He knocked the guy out, but you know that guy wasn't pretty. He, he wasn't anything. So it was, you know, pretty. That was a bad match, but you know, moving on. Um, Paul Malinaji, uh, Malinaji against uh, Antonio uh, Moscatelio, uh, a good fight. Uh, Malinaji, you know, he was he did what he did. He was against a German fighter. Really interesting fight, you know, Paul Malinaji. He's been, you know, he's been great. He's he's uh, he's got two two world titles in in uh, two different weight classes, and he's just been a great boxer. You can can see it today, you know, in this pedigree of fighters he was fighting right now, is is pretty good uh, for him, I think. You know, because he's slowed down obviously a little bit. He's fourth best out there, and he's you know not as good as he used to be, but still, he's he's a wonderful boxer. I think he's got great head movements. He's got um, Great technique. He moves around the ring good. You know, reads his opponent good, um, and it was you know very very well deserved to him to take the vacant EVU and Euro, uh, Euro uh, Union welterweight title. Uh, great job for Malinaji. He's um, he's quite a character that guy. I mean, he he has amazing boxing knowledge. You can hear that when he's uh, refereeing fights. He's always very into the game, you know what happens uh, in the head of, of fighters and why they are doing what they do. And he's he's a very um, knowledgeable uh, fighter, I would say. You know, he's he's got great ring knowledge both out, outside and in. So really good fight to to start off my my watching anyway. So I thought that was a great watch. Um, moving on, Luke Campbell. Um, Against uh, Ivan Mendy from France, the deputy mayor of his village in France. Uh, also, um, I had very high anticipations in that fight because I mean, Luke Campbell is uh, an up and coming star. You know, I saw him in the 2012 Olympics. Really great fighter, you know, great boxer, I would say. He has a It's a very nice technique. He moves well. Um, he's not, he's, you know, he's not a young guy. He's 28, so he he came into the to the pro scene pretty pretty late. But you know, he's done a lot in um, in uh, amateur boxing with with his uh, his world championship wins and his in his you know Olympic medal. Ivan Mendy is a tough nut to crack. I would say, you know, after 12. 12 fights for Luke Campbell, it would, would be pretty hard to put him in with a guy who's done uh, 36, 37 fights, you know, one, 32, four defeats, one, one draw. And, you know, it was a hard test for him. He, he was good. I mean, he, he stood up good to the guy. It, it was a really good boxing, competitive boxing match. Uh, Ivan Mendy was, you know, you can see him, he, he just had more experience. And he was he was a step uh, step further than than Luke Campbell was. You know he was a half step behind Luke Campbell, and I don't think it would it will do anything for his career. It would probably you know help him in his career because he uh, 
He's a you know he's young as a as a as a fighter in the program and in pro in the pro game and he needs this kind of experience to to grow. I think he will just come back and be better because I mean he wasn't far after Ivan Mendy. Uh, you know, of course it wasn't nice to to lose the WBC international lightweight title, but you know that's that's the way it is. I think he'll come back, and I think he'll come back strong because. He is, in my mind, one of the best British fighters, uh, boxers out there. And, you know, you can see what he's done so far in this Olympic gold. I think he will be, in the future, a, a future world world champion of several classes, I would say. Um, Tony Bellew uh, against uh, Matthias Masternak. That was a really good fight. Uh, I mean, Tony Bellew, he's, uh, he's had a, you know, up and down career, I would say. He's, uh, well, you know, only lost two of, of uh, 27, 28 fights. And he's had one, one draw. So it's not up and down. But he's, you know, been lacking in confidence in, in those uh, other fights. So it was nice to see him in with a guy as good as Matthias Masternak. I mean... Matthias Masternak is one of my my favorite uh, European fighters. I, I always respected him. I think he's a he's a solid solid boxer. He has you know great great physique. He has great technique, and he's he's just a good good uh, good fighter. I mean, 36 wins, only three three defeats. So that was a good win for Tony Bellew. I wasn't sure he was going to come out on top. Uh, on that one and he did I mean it was a great 12 rounder where both guys was just you know it was good just going back and forth it was really old-fashioned brawl you know combined with it with great boxing skills so I enjoy that much uh, match really much and you know Tony Bellew coming up to Cruiserweight it was he didn't look small I mean he, he looked good he looked like he's been a Cruiserweight forever so I thought that was um yeah it was Brilliant match to watch, uh, brilliant match, and uh, well, the upset of uh, first upset of the night was Kevin Mitchell against uh, Ismail Barroso. Um, I thought um, Kevin Mitchell would have that one in the bag. I mean, I, I I don't know, I didn't know much about Ismail Barroso before. I know he was undefeated. Um, you know, I read a little bit about him on Box Rec. Didn't you know? I haven't seen the guy fight before, and when he came in, he looked like you know. I, th I thought, well, this guy is probably, you know, he looked like a guy who's done fifty fights, not um, uh, twenty. So that was, you know, I thought Kevin Mitchell. He's he's had a rough patch, coming off uh, you know difficult defeats. I thought this was going to be a a good match for him, and you know, walking the park. But boy, was I wrong. I mean. This guy, Ismail Brosso, he t just powered in and took the lead from, from, you know, first punch. And, you know, it's, it's pretty interesting when you see a guy as good as Kevin Mitchell getting beat by a guy who just looks so much better. I mean, Ismail Brosso looks like he was, you know, he looked like he looked like he... he uh, he was two, you know, two classes over in skill-wise, and he was tough and hard, and he fought really good. I, um, uh, well, when when the when the TKO came in round five, I wasn't really surprised. I was just like, wow, you know, that was a fantastic finish to a great, you know, great setup, because he really set him up, and I mean, he finished him with a with a with a jab. <laughs> that was pretty cool to see. You don't see that often, you know. He came in with his um, with his power behind his, his left, and and um, Kevin Mitchell was moving forward. So um, yeah, great finish. I I was really impressed, and I, it's going to be fun to see Isman Rosso now the new interim WA World uh, Lightweight Weight Heavy uh, Lightweight Champion. So it's going to be good to see this guy in the future. Um, I think a lot of guys are going to be having a, a tough time with with uh, that guy. Um, and Anthony Joshua versus Dylan White. Dylan White. Uh, that was a 
cracking fight. I mean, what a heavyweight fight. <laughs> it was the best heavyweight fight I've seen in, well, in ages. I haven't seen a, that good a heavyweight tie. I can't you know, remember really when I, when I was so into a heavyweight tie fight. Because the main thing is, for me, I'm, I'm a heavyweight myself and I've, I've competed in heavyweight division. I'm usually like, you know, the lower classes most, like cruiserweight or, or middleweight, because I think, you know, the, it, more action and more technique, right? Usually, you know, a lot of times you see the big guys, it's one, two, three punches, and then, you know, they back off for a couple of rounds, and then, you know, everybody's waiting for a, for a knockout shot. So um, that was a great, a really great heavyweight boxing fight. And... Dillian White, you know, he came in, you can see he was he was not afraid of Anthony Joshua. And I mean, Anthony Joshua, who's 198 centimeters and he weighs, you know, fucking weighs a ton. The, the guy's built like a house, right? And Dillian White, was, he was good. You know, he took the game to Joshua. And you can see Joshua in the beginning was very stiff. He thought he was going to knock him out right away. I mean, you can see that he was... Just, you know, straight up, he got hit in the face repeatedly. You know, White could hit him whenever he wants, wanted. I thought, you know, I, I, I believed really from, from, the, from before that he was going to knock White out. And, you know, I said to, said to a friend of mine, five, fifth or sixth round, uh, he's, he's going to be a knockout. But um, when the first round, the second round happened, I was, I was kind of... Um, intrigued and i was wondering to myself you know how will he handle this will he um you know will he just power on use his muscles and you know just continue and take shots and go down or what what will happen because i didn't really see it going this way before i didn't really see dylan white being this competitive and uh, you know he changed the rhythm and that's difficult for a fighter to do i mean when you you're in a set rhythm you're in a special mind frame most fighters, common fighters, average fighters, or even, you know, up to journeymen and above status, they they lock on, you know, they, they do the same thing over and over and over again, and it's it's hard to break that. Um, but he changed. I mean, he, he knew that after round three, well, in, before round three, he knew that the tactics he had wasn't going to work. He knew that he had to do something, and you can see when he came out in third, he was loose, he was concentrated, he started boxing, he started to move his head, you know, setting up the jab instead of just power punching, right? And he was slow in the beginning. He was, um, you could see him tiring out. And, and I mean, of course, you know, that first round brawl they had and it was tough for him. I mean, he's a big guy, but I was impressed. I thought he was picking up pace, you know, as further in, in the fight he came and he didn't look knackered afterwards. He didn't look, you know, really tired. He looked better and better. And, you know, that to me says a lot about the future. It says that Anthony Joshua has what it takes because he, he, he's smart enough to know that he's got to change. And he's not, you know, he's, uh, he's, um, his discipline is good enough that he can change. And he's humble enough to know that he has to change. So... He was set on knocking the guy out first, you know, in the first round. When he realized that wouldn't work, he said, okay, take it easy, get the rounds in, and, you know, do the work until it, until an opportunity comes. And, I mean, it, it came. He was, um, in my mind, White was, you know, living on borrowed time the three last rounds because he was good, he was competitive, he was pushing, pushing Joshua, and... You know, that, that guy kind of reminds me of, uh, of a Derek Chisora in a way, a guy who can really test people. And But, you know, Anthony Joshua just maintained, came back and did his thing. And the finish, what a finish. That, that you know, shot to the head. You know, you've got the balance nerve here. You can see White was gone. He didn't really have anything left. I've been hit there. You know, it's not easy. <laughs> you because you lose feeling in in your body you know from your from your neck down and it's it's tough to to recoup and he didn't go crazy josh i mean he didn't just go in and you know he waited a little bit you, you know you could see he moved from 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 one side of the ring to the other got him up set up his uppercut and it was over so 
a fantastic card by by Eddie Hearn and, and Matchroom Boxing. I was blown away. It made my evening. It was just a fantastic, fantastic fight card, and I was really happy with that. Um, on an ending note, I would like to talk a little bit about Tyson Fury and Klitschko. I mean, I've been sort of... I had my opinion from, from the first, and it's still the same. I think it was a really good uh, heavyweight for you all. It was an, an exciting fight, I can't say that. It was, it was a good heavy fight, because look at Tyson Fury. I mean, he's been shooting his mouth off for years, and I've, everybody's been thinking he's a crackpot, right? Everybody's thinking he's a you know, delusional son of a gun. But, I mean, look at the guy. He, he did something that people have been trying to do for 10 years against a, a great, you know, probably one of the best heavyweight champions there's ever been. He, he did something amazing, and he did it with with being cool and be, having a great um, plan to his boxing. Came in, you know, stayed on the outside, used his long reach, jab, jab, you know, got Klitschko frustrated, and when the sort he sort of built it up, you could see that when when Klitschko was really, you know, some he, he was sort of getting into that rhythm of just chasing, you know, forward goes. Fury, bam, bam, two shots, one shot, just a pop shot, you know, just getting the guy and making him more frustrated. And to me, it was just, a, a, that's, you know, what boxing's all about. You can either be knockouts and, and brawling and, you know, amazing boxing skills, close range, long race, or you can be like this, a chess match where one guy get, gets the up, upper hand. And I mean, of, of course, I understand everybody that says that, that, uh, you know, it was a boring fight because it wasn't, you know, I didn't really jump off out of my seat and and cry hallelujah at every punch. But, you know, I thought it was an interesting match and hats off to Tyson Fury because he did it. You know, he, he really executed his plan and he stayed the course and he, you know, he won. Um, if the rematch happens, which I think it will, uh, it probably is already set. But, you know, if Klitschko... Klitschko, it will probably be something else because Klitschko's got to change and do something else or he will lose um, again. And I don't think for him that's an option because he's come back before. And I mean, this sort of thing just spurs him on. And I don't know if you guys noticed it, but he was really thin, uh, well, you know, thin-ish compared to his usual fights. Usually, you know, last couple of fights I've seen him, he's been in what, weighing 117 kilos. Now he weighed 110. So that's seven kilos less, and he still looked muscly, right? So he's lost uh, a lot against a big guy like Tyson Fury. So I don't know if he trained too hard or, you know, something, but he didn't really look like himself. He looked old. Uh, my trainer said, you know, he said something where he said he looks old and slow, and I, you know, I agree with him. It was, um, it was a different uh, Vladimir Klitschko that you saw that night. So, um, well, it's going to be interesting to see the, the follow-up match. David Hayes back in the game, great, you know, it's going to be with David Hay, Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, uh, Britain's got a, you know, really, well, Derek Chisora as well, got great, you know, base for, for heavyweight boxers. Uh, Wilder, you know, he's, he fought a good guy last time, but, you know, not the best, so who knows what happens. It will be great to see Wilder going after somebody with a more international status. Um, uh, you got, you know, s some of the uh, Swedish boxers coming back. Uh, Helenius is coming back, uh, the Nordic Nightmare. So it's going to be interesting to watch that comeback. I think, for me, the, um, the heavyweight division is looking better. And, you know, a lot of people say it's not like it used to be. Well, it's not like it used to be, because the guys are not, you know, they're not one, they're not 183 centimeters anymore. I know it's fast, you know, and almost everybody's over 200 centimeters and a big guys, you know, so it's not as fast, but it's still interesting, I think. Um, I'm interested in what's going to happen in the, in the heavyweight division uh, in the last, you know, the next two, three years. Oh, uh, before I forget, WBC has ordered um, GG, uh, Triple G and uh, Saul Canelo to fight uh, on the 16th of May 2016. Uh, they each have 
permission to fight somebody else before to you know to get the edge if they want it and to hype up the fight. Um, if they don't fight, if you know if a contract is reached and they don't fight, somebody's going to lose the belt. Uh, both if they don't fight. So WBC has set out a mandatory meet between between these two guys. Um, read it just today. That is going to be poof, sweet. Well, thank you very much for listening. Um, please send in your thoughts. You know, I always uh, like to hear from you guys. Um, and if you know have request for some boxer you wanna want me to cover, you know, amateur, pro, whatever, please let me know. And um, thank you all for watching. Please go to check out my Facebook page. Uh, it's in the links. And uh, take care of yourself, guys. Have a nice day.